In the first section of the video, we will go through some general information about Switzerland, including the top universities and ranking. In the second part, we will discuss the salary of PhD students in Switzerland with all details. Then in the third part, you can watch and gain some information about the social benefits of PhD students in Switzerland. In the fourth part, the tax and net salary of PhD students in Switzerland will be discussed. And in the section five, the living expenses of typical PhD students in Switzerland will be discussed. Please note all the information provided in this video are accurate and correct up to the date of recording this video, which is July 2021. Switzerland is a small but wealthy country located in the center of Europe and shares the border with Germany, Italy, France, Austria and Liechtenstein. Although it is a small country with less than 9 million population, it has two of the best universities in the world. The Swiss Federal Institute of Technology Zurich, which is known as ETHZ, and Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne, located in Lausanne, are the top 10 universities in the world, which are both located in Switzerland. Both ETHZ and EPFL are famous for their cutting-edge scientific activities and contribution to the development of new technology. Like other Western countries, university and research centers in Switzerland hire PhD students for the duration of their study. And this is not very uncommon as many other European countries including Denmark, Germany, Sweden, Finland, Austria, Netherlands, Ireland, Norway and the UK do the same. The good news is if you are hired on a fully funded PhD position, you will earn quite decent salary. So don't worry about the expenses and watch the rest of the video for further details. Let's look at the gross salary of PhD student in Switzerland as of 2021. According to the ETH website, the salary rates for the doctor ex students in 2021 are as follows. The standard rate for the first year students is starting from 47,000 Swiss franc, which is almost 47,000 US dollar. And this number grows to the second year to 48,000 and up to 50,000 in the third year. But if you are hired on a rate 2 basis, then the starting salary is slightly higher and started from 52,000 and end to 57,000 on the third year. The same holds if you go up further to the rate 3, the first year PhD students who is hired based on the rate 3 will receive 58,000 as a starting salary at, in the first year and that number goes up up to 65,000 per year. The rate 4 salary is apparently higher and the starting value is 64,000 and it goes up to 72,000 Swiss franc for up on the third year. And the last rate or the highest rate of the PhD students are rate 5 where the starting salary of the first year is 70,000 and the end uh, or the third year salary would be 80,000 Swiss franc. As mentioned earlier, the salary in different rates are quite different. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, the standard rate of the first year is 47,000, but if you are on a rate 5, the starting salary would be 70,000 Swiss franc. So now you might ask yourself, how can I qualify for a rate 5 instead of a standard rate to so get the highest salary, a uh, uh, highest possible salary? According to the Ordinance Governing Scientific Employee of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, the rate of the salary depends directly on the workload of the doctoral students beside his or her research. So let's read the statement from the Ordinance Governing Scientific Employee of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. 
It reads, if doctoral students provide services in excess of the normal minimum level of teaching in the department, they are entitled to a higher rate of payment. But you should note that the student should spend at least 70% of his or her time on the dissertation and related research activity. So it means if you are a PhD student, you cannot commit yourself to more than 30% on teaching. So that means the maximum teaching load of a PhD students on are 30% of their time. That is why the rate is determined upon the agreement between the employer and the employee, which is the PhD students in this case. But no matter if you are in the standard rate, rate 1 or rate 5, the good news is the salary grows every year and it can increase up to the third year, which is a quite good news. In addition to the normal salary, the PhD students receive a family allowance from the government. That's because in the Switzerland, as a PhD student, you are employed by university, so you will be treated from the, from the university as a university employee. So that means the PhD students, like other employees in Switzerland, receive a family allowance for caring for children. And the family allowance is relatively good and as you can see in this slide different types of allowance include child allowance, education allowance and allowance that you will get according to the age of the children. Overall is kind of a good bonus further to the salary that you receive from the university. As an employee of the university, you should pay tax based on the income that you receive. To make it easier, the whole calculation, I will go through some practical examples. So we assume that you are on the standard date and other type of rates, and I'll give you some real value number of how much of money you can take home after paying the salary. So as a starting point, let's look at the standard rate of PhD studentship. So it means you are on the standard rate of PhD studentship. In that case, then your net monthly salary, it means the salary after all the deduction from your um, uh, gross income would be 3,330 Swiss franc per month, which is corresponding to 3,600 US dollar as it now. So that means based on this salary rate, you will pay monthly 589 Swiss franc uh, from your 3,920 uh, Swiss franc gross salary. The deduction in these cases is not only the tax, but there are some other components as well. For instance, you should pay non-occupational accident, AHV contribution, ALV contribution. These are both like kind of a insurance in place, savings contribution, pension fund, risk premium, pension fund, and withholding tax. However, the deduction of your salary or the tax that you will pay also very much depends on the, your marital status. So it means if you are a single person with other children or is, if you are married with a children, then the amount of salary you pay would be different. And uh, Let's look at an example. So assume you are married with one child at the time of being employed by university. So then, then the, let, the net monthly salary in that case, for the case of a standard rate, would be 3,428 Swiss franc, which corresponds to 3,700 US dollar per month. If you have got a family, then you will also receive a family allowance, which in these cases is plus 376 Swiss franc per month, which add up to the value which I explained earlier. Now let's have a look at the net salary of PhD students in Switzerland in case the students are hired in rate 2. So in that cases if the person is single means it has is not married and hasn't got any children the gross monthly salary so it means the salary before paying any tax 
would be 4,400 Swiss franc. But if you do apply the deduction which includes the taxes on other contribution which I explained earlier, the net salary or take home money per month would be 3,700 Swiss franc. However, if the same person are, is married but haven't got any children, the net salary or take home money would be almost 100 uh, Swiss franc more every single month. And again, the same person, if it's married and have got one children and receive the, the family allowance from the government, then the net salary or take home money per month would be 4,250 Swiss franc. So not very surprisingly, the differences of take home money between the person which is single and those who is married and those married with children would be rather huge. In that particular example, you have seen that the difference would be even up to 500 Swiss, krono, uh, Swiss franc per month. So now let's have a look at the tax calculation of PhD students in rate 3. So apparently the gross salary or the salary before tax is higher. So the starting salary for that case is for a single person for everybody would be 4,880 Swiss franc. So that means the net, the gross salary before tax would be the same if you are single, married with children or married without children. However, the net salary as we explained is higher or different. For the case of a single person, the net salary would be 4,088 Swiss franc. But if the person is married but hasn't gotten still the children would be 4,200 and in case of the married person with the children then which basically means receiving the family allowance as well would be around 4,600. Again there is a huge difference between the case of a married and unmarried person and the person with children. And let's have a look for the similar calculation for the case of rate 4. So the gross salary, so it means the salary before tax monthly would be 5,370 Swiss franc. These are the number based on the value up to September 2021, which are valid up to September 2021. So apparently after that date, the, the, if you are watching this video after that date, the value might be slightly higher. So the take home money or the net salary or the salary after paying tax for the single person would be 4,450 Swiss franc. For the married person without the children would be 4,598. And with, for a married with one children would be 5,045 Swiss franc. And just the last calculation for the case of a PhD students which are hired based on the rate 5. So the first uh, year salary for a single person or married with a child or married, married with children would be 5,850 Swiss franc per month. But after deduction for a single person the net home net or take home salary would be 4,800. For a married person without a children would be 4,984 Swiss franc and for a married with one child would be 5,440 uh, 5, Swiss franc. Now let's talk about the cost of living in Switzerland. It is not very surprising to say living in Switzerland is pretty expensive, especially cities like Zurich, Geneva, Basel and Bern are the most expensive places in Europe and maybe among the top 20 or top 30 expensive cities in the world. So, but the cost of living and a students very much depends on the place where you live in. For instance, if you live in a dormitory shared apartment on or on your own the rent prices can vary quite significantly but the best 
place to look for as a student to live cheaper apparently would be a bit out outskirts of the city and then you need to commute to the university every single day however as the country has a very good and robust transportation system like bus train and tram so would not be at all any difficulties or issue to come there Similar to the cost of rent or accommodation, the cost of grocery or foods are also very high compared to the rest of Europe. So just to give you an idea of how does it compare to the other countries, we can say at least the foods are on, on average 30% more expensive compared to Germany. In case of the fees of university, if you are a PhD student, so you are hired by university, so you don't need to pay any fees. But for those who are doing undergraduate studies, probably they should pay some fees, which is beyond the scope of this video. So to make a summary about the cost of living in the country, we can say the students will need a minimum of 17,000 to 18,000 Swiss franc per year. So apparently as a PhD student you can really leave without any issue because you are earning at least four times three to four times of that value. Thank you for watching with the video. If you have any question, leave the leave your question as a comment below this video and make sure to subscribe to see our future video as well.